Well, good morning, Merry Christmas, and welcome to our Lessons and Carols service celebrating the 12 days of Christmas. Let us begin with the greeting and welcome. The angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. As we gather, we hear again the good news the angel proclaimed. God has come for all people through the birth of the one named Jesus. Through Bethlehem's manger, God comes into the chaos, messiness, and vulnerability of the world. In all things, at all times, we rejoice that God comes to save us and reigns in love. We come to adore Jesus, who is Savior, Christ, and Lord. Please stand for confession and forgiveness. Amid the troubles and fears of this world, let us confess our sin and welcome God's forgiveness, grace, and love. Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our lack of faith and trust. Your son was born in the poverty of a stable. Forgive our neglect of the poor. The shepherds left their flocks and went to Bethlehem. Forgive our selfishness and complacency. With great joy, the angels proclaim, Do not fear, for I bring you good news of great joy. Today is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. In Jesus, who is our Savior, Christ and Lord, who our sins are forgiven. May you know the peace which the angels sang from the heavens. Indeed, God's forgiveness is good news of great joy. Amen. Let us sing. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you gave your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be a sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart the love of the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field. Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A reading from Isaiah. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted, sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. the Gospel of Matthew, the first chapter. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way, when his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. For unto you is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. You may be seated. The Night Before Christmas by Sister St. Thomas, a more spiritual version of the famous Christmas story. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the town, St. Joseph was searching, watching up roads and down. Our Lady was waiting so meek and so mild while Joseph was seeking a place for the child. The children were nestled, each snug in their beds. The grown-ups wouldn't bother. There's no room, they said. When even the innkeeper sent them away, Joseph was wondering where they would stay. He thought of the caves in the side of the hills. Let's go there, said Mary. It's silent and still. The moon on the breast of a new fallen snow made pathways of light for their tired feet to go. And there in a cave, in a cradle of hay, our Savior was born on the first Christmas day. The Father was watching in heaven above. He sent 
for his angels, his couriers of love. More rapid than eagles, God's bright angels came, rejoicing and eager as each heard his name. Come power, come cherubs, come virtues, come Raphael, come thrones and dominions, come Michael and Gabriel. Now fly to the earth where my poor people live. Announce the glad tidings my son comes to give. The shepherds were watching their flocks on this night and saw in the heavens an unearthly light. The angels assured them they had nothing to fear. It's Christmas, they said. The Savior is here. They hastened to find him and stood at the door till Mary invited them in to a door. He was swaddled in bands from his head to his feet. Never did the shepherds see a baby so sweet. He spoke not a word, but the shepherds all knew he was telling them secrets and blessing them too. Then softly they left him the babe in the hay and rejoiced with great joy on that first Christmas day. Mary heard them exclaim as they walked up the hill, glory to God in the highest, peace to people of good will. Let us pray a post-Christmas prayer. Long after the angels disappear into the heavens, the angel shepherds return to their flocks, the magi re journey home and the great star sets. Jesus remains. The child in whom we rediscover God's great love for humanity becomes the adult redeemer who challenges us to imitate his selflessness and compassion in order that we might transform our world in love. May we allow the miracle of Christmas to continue long after the holiday trappings have been packed away. May we welcome the adult Messiah and his challenging gospel to recreate our lives, making the peace, justice, and hope of this holy season a reality in every season of the new year. Amen. Let us sing low how a rose is blooming. You may remain seated. <laughs>
A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to all who, co who mourn and to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For unto you is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of John, the first chapter. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. There is he of whom I said. After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. For unto you is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. You may be seated. Our second reflection is by Ed Sunday Winters, senior pa pastor at Ball Camp Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. He blogs on a site called Just Words, and he writes, Bill Neeport is a friend of mine from seminary days and pastor of Patterson Avenue Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia. He's toying with the idea of creating a John the Baptist line of Christmas cards. So far, here is what he has produced. Outside the card, from your house, to ours this holiday season. Inside the card, Merry Christmas, you brood of vipers. Outside the card, let's all pass the cup as we gather round the Yule log. Inside, which burns like the unquenchable fire of hell that is soon going to consume you for all eternity with love, John. Outside. Season's greetings to you from across the miles. Inside. Hey, who told you to flee from the wrath to come? This is, of course, straight out of scripture, but not very Christmas sounding. John's words change our focus. If Christmas is about renewing our hope in the idea of peace on earth and goodwill among all people, John reminds us that we are to be an integral part of bringing such an idea to fruition. 
If Christmas is about God taking on flesh and coming to live among us humans, then John reminds us of our need to turn our lives toward the one who is coming to us. If Christmas is about God assuming the vulnerable form of a human infant, John reminds us that being vulnerable to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and open to the weak and vulnerable among us is how we embrace this infant being born into our lives. If Christmas is wise men traveling from afar, angels singing, and shepherds being astonished and afraid, John reminds us that our joining the cosmic and timeless celebration means confessing our failures, owning our weaknesses, and seeking healing for our wounds. Christmas can be a confusing time for many folks for a variety of reasons. In the midst of difficult economic times, money for presents will be limited for many. If the focus of Christmas is buying, then no doubt there will be some who are feeling like they have not had much of a Christmas. If Christmas is about family and a family member is ill, away from home, deployed overseas, or has passed away, Christmas will be different at best and impossible at worst. What John does for us in this season is to focus our attention on what is most important, the most important item, and that is our list of things to do in order to get ready for Christmas. With laser precision, John calls us to look at our own lives, our relationships with God, and the ways those relationships impact our lives and how we live our lives. For you see, if Christmas is to happen this time, it will not happen in a far away and long ago stable. If Christmas is to happen, no, it will happen in the lives of women and men and boys and girls who are ready to invite and embrace the birth of new experience, a new experience of the reality of God in their lives. December 25th appears on our calendar. Christmas comes. What John wants us to know is whether or not Christmas will happen in you. Are you getting ready? Amen.
Another reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. For unto you is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month of the, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Unto us. You may be seated. Our final reflection is from a devotional you may be familiar with, Christ in Our Home. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, John 1, 14. She had trouble getting to sleep. She was afraid, and she cried. Several times, her mother went to her room and attempted to assure her that she was safe. She had no need to worry. God is with you her mother said. I know, answered her daughter, but I want a God with skin on. We can understand. God can too. So well does God understand our need, and so much does God love us, that in Jesus Christ, God became a human being and lived among us. God understands our sorrow because he sorrowed. God understands our suffering because he suffered. God suffered because of us and yet for us. And as one whose coming brought great joy, God shares our joy. John's Gospel identifies the God who came among us as the Word. God kept his promise made long ago to deliver us, and so God's Word came to live among us. It is not only a child who wants a God with skin on we all do, whatever our age. We need a God who took our place on the cross and who takes his place beside us in a word. We need the word. Gracious God, 
We thank you for your word. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he comes down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will again in glory to judge the living and the dead. will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Okay. 
Rejoicing in the good news of Christ's birth and dwelling in hope, we let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Blessed Jesus, your name is proclaimed through preaching, sacraments, music, art, and all forms of creativity. Bring together congregations and leaders from various traditions to make you known. Hear us, O God. Blessed Jesus, you reveal yourself through creation, here on earth and throughout the cosmos. Protect endangered species, bring favorable weather, and guide us to be good stewards of all that you have made. Hear us, O God. Blessed Jesus, you show nations and leaders the way of your humble servant. Guide all in authority to use power for the benefit of all people throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Blessed is Jesus, you attend to the needs of your brothers and sisters. Hear the cry of those who call upon your name. We especially pray prayers of healing and wholeness for Valerie Brown, Blaine Banfield, John Reynolds, Jennifer Spaghera, and Burnett Howie, and David Dinwiddie. We pray prayers of sympathy for friends and family of Maryland Nations and Bill Roberts. Send caregivers to provide help to all in need. Hear us, O God. Blessed Jesus, you shower us with your grace, accompany students returning to school, workers who rest from a busy holiday season, and your people gathered here for worship. Hear us, O God. Blessed Jesus, you emptied yourself to take on our likeness and form, so we are blessed to become children of God. Inspire us by the witness of the faithful departed to confess your name above all names. Hear us, O God. Hear the prayers of your people, glorious God, for the sake of the one who took on our nature and form to redeem the whole world, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and we will have a time of offering.
God with us. You come as a baby to a manger. You slept on straw and greeted shepherds. You come again in bread and wine. Remind us how good you are at blessing ordinary things. And then through these gifts, bless, us, bless the lives of others in the strength of your holy name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do so remembering Christ died, Christ risen, and Christ shall come again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. We commune by intinction today. And so we will have two standing stations, one here and one on this side. You'll receive the wafer, hold on to it, and then dip it in either the dark liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice. And there will be gluten-free elements available on a stand near me. So come, let us eat.
invite you to stand as you are able to receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. On this day, O God, you gave us Christ the Son to save us. As you sent the one foretold, send us now with good news for all people. Let the gladness of this feast have no end as we share with others the joy that fills us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. may be seated. I don't know if there's any announcements beyond the message. Is there anyone that's... Any announcements? Okay. Then I'll refer you to look at the messenger for announcements. Um, of the office is closed on Tuesday, and I believe a half day tomorrow. I think we close at noon. So, FYI. And tomorrow, if you would like to give end of your givings, you have still till tomorrow to um, bring those to the office. You can drop those off, um, and they will be received. I guess I should have had you stay standing. <laughs> <laughs> May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the patience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, and the everlasting peace of the Jesus who is Savior, Christ, and Lord. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all church, the disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture you, gather resources for growing ministries, and offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, serve our Savior, Christ and Lord. <laughs> 